I came across um, a report and it said that the advertising company J. Walter Thompson of London, um, I believe it's an advertising company, um, and I stand corrected if that's not the case, but anyway, this company has come up with a shocking and striking way to draw attention to domestic violence. Now, domestic violence is obviously a depressing subject. It's not a cheery subject to talk about, but it is a real problem with, um, I, I believe in this country, it's as many as two or three women die every week from domestic violence. Um, and studies have shown that at a time when a sporting event is going on, if um, if the team or the side of the domestic abuser loses, there is a stronger likelihood that um, the woman will be a victim of domestic violence. And in this case, I am talking specifically about male and female violence. Um, although we know violence against men happens as well, but this is in the context of men who take their football so seriously that they would be prepared to take it out on a partner or if their team loses, and that's repugnant. So anyway, the, the campaign has a very striking image. It has a woman's lower face, her mouth, and it's the England flag, the, the red uh, cross of St. George. But that's blood. Like, it's coming down her face and across as blood. So it's very striking. Um, there has been a little bit of criticism of it that it's singling England out. Um, I mean, there's domestic violence in Scotland and Northern Ireland and Wales as well. Um, and of course, in other parts of the world, I imagine there's campaigns in other parts of the world. But I, I think that's kind of missing the point a little bit. I, I understand that criticism because, of course, this is a problem in all four home nations. But it is striking and um, it is a problem. Now, the men who do this, um, whether this campaign is going to get them to see the light or not, I don't know. But I, I just think that is one of the most cardly, despicable things to do. To have such little self-control that you would actually beat up your wife or girlfriend because your team loses. Um, I think that's disgusting. And to be quite honest, these men are nothing but dickheads. They, they, they deserve no respect whatsoever. Um, and I, I hope that... I absolutely support custodial sentences for violent men who beat up their wives and girlfriends. The difficulty, of course, is getting the victims to press charges. Um, such men are absolute scumbags, in my opinion. I, I really, I mean, that's not manly to have such little self-control that you would take it out, well, that you would take it out on anybody, but particularly someone you're supposed to love and care for. Um, but I've always had contempt for sports fans. It's mostly men, it has to be said. Some women as well who cannot control themselves when a team loses. So that could be rioting. It could be hurling abuse at athletes, at footballers, um, at referees. I'm thinking, get a life, you sad people. I mean, I understand if you're really into a particular sport, you're really into a team, it's disappointing if they lose. Um, in some poor countries, people really do live for it, like the success of a national team, and it's a big thing. So I get the disappointment, but what I don't think is acceptable is to use that disappointment as an excuse to behave in such a despicable, thuggish um, way. And I think it's a particular problem in football, but you could probably find it in other sports. I've been very vocal about what I think of so-called boxing fans that if their fighter loses or they think that the referee has been unfair or whatever, um, they think that gives them a right to riot or to hurl abuse at the guy's opponent. It's disgusting. Have some goddamn self-control. I mean, in the end of the day, we're talking about a sport. Yes, this is the World Cup. I get it. It's, it's a big thing in the football calendar. But in the end of the day, if England loses, it's not the end of the world. They'll be more World Cups, there'll be other opportunities. Um, but nothing justifies taking out abuse on someone that you're supposed to love. Nothing justifies abusing anyone over a sporting event. But to, to get to take it so seriously and so to get so upset that you would actually hurt someone that you're supposed to love. I imagine, sadly, up and down the country, there will be women living in fear and hoping that England will prevail or Scotland will prevail. Um, 
or the local teams will prevail because if they lose, they know the husband or the boyfriend will be in a bad mood. He'll be drinking heavily. Then he'll come back and take it out on her. What a scumbag. I really think men like this need to face a custodial sentence. But like I say, the issue there is convincing the victim to come forward. And more often than not, they, they make excuses for him. And sadly, this cycle continues. I believe if they have children, they have a responsibility to, to press charges. Because that's dangerous when you have a man who has no self-control and he's doing that. Um, finally, if you are such a man, um, clearly you're not going to care what I think of you. But it's, you, you know, do you have no shame? Do you have no shame? I mean, that you have such such weakness. That That's not a manly thing to do. That sh all that does is show how weak you are that you, you would live through the success of a football team. Get your own life, you know. Uh, I don't understand anyone who would use uh, events of a sport or of the outcome of a sporting event to... I understand people being upset or disappointed, fine, but to actually go to the point of abusing other people, whether it be their partners or whether it be starting a riot, or taking it out on the referee. Um, this can be extended, and I don't want to go too far off on a tangent here, but when during that Miss Universe um, mix-up a few years ago, the, the I forget his name now, but the, the host who made the mix-up, basically he read out the name of Miss Columbia and Miss Philippines had won. Apparently, people in Colombia were sending him death threats because of the mix-up. Seriously. Seriously, death threats. I think it's disturbing that there are people out there that seem to live through something. In that case, it's living through the results of a Miss World competition. Okay, it, it was an embarrassing moment. It was awkward for everyone involved, and it shouldn't have happened. But it's to actually threaten the man through an honest, because of an honest mistake, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely... There's some sick, sad, pathetic little people out there, and I really have nothing for contempt, but for contempt for them. Just get a life. Stop living through other people or through a sports team. You know, it's football is called a beautiful game. Well, prove it. Stop acting in such an ugly way.